everyone. Welcome to Stogie Geek Shorts. We're going to talk about five common misconceptions that people have about cigars. Here with me today is Todd Lascola from the Havana Cigar Club. Welcome, Todd. Thank you, Paul. On the lines via Skype, Mr. Will Cooper. Greetings, everyone. Hey, Will. And, hey, Todd. Uh, so, Will and Todd, this is also kind of inspired by the blending seminar I attended from Jose Blanco. Um, it tended to mention a lot of these misconceptions the, that people have about cigars. I know that you've heard them, especially working in the retail environment, for yeah. sure. Will, you've heard these as well. Some of our listeners might have uh, heard these as well, but what I want to do is, if you understand this misconception, is to help educate people about cigars. And that was really, you know, Jose's mission uh, in doing that. And I wanted to bring that onto the show and talk about, you know, I've got five things, right, that people, yeah. I, th I think these are the most common and you guys may have more, but um, my first one that I have on the list is that the Maduro is a type of plant or leaf. That, that's probably the most common one. It's very common. Yeah. For whatever reason, people really attach to Maduro. They're like, oh, either I really like Maduro, I don't like Maduro, and they're like, you know, they want to talk about that Maduro tobacco. And what uh, I've learned over the years and what Jose was explaining last night as well is that of course, Maduro is a process, right? Now, there are different ways to achieve the same goal, which I don't want to get into anyone, you know, speculation <laughs> about who might be using those uh, methods, right? But you can cook it, which yes. is one method. You can paint it, which is another method. Those two methods are not the traditional method or one that, you know, I think produces the best type of wrap relief, obviously. But the way to do it is how, how you ferment it. And it's a fermentation process. Maduro is... Solely a fermentation process has nothing to do with it. You can make a Maduro out of any type of tobacco plant. Now, I'm sure, obviously, some are better than others of course. for that process. Um, the two regions that are very popular for that, of course, um, well, there's lots of different regions, right? But the two to come to mind are a San Andreas Maduro, yep. very popular. And, of course, Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro. Absolutely. Uh, being the two most popular. So, Will, have you heard this misconception a lot? Yeah, I hear it all, all the time. Um, and yeah, you, know, you said it's it is a it process. It's it's not in, not even necessarily the color, although most of the time the process lends itself yes. to darkness, the darkness because of of the fermentation that goes on. Sure. So the other one that I heard was people referring to lejero as a type of seed. Yeah, if, that one I haven't heard. That one I haven't, haven't heard, heard so much. One? Yeah. And um, obviously, Lajero is a priming. Yes. Upmost, topmost priming of the plant, which receives the most sun, gets the most nutrients, nutrients, and tends to have much stronger nicotine strength. Yes. I've 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 heard Lajero as its own type of leaf, as its own you know type of plant, but not yeah you know, that that I one's a you. common yeah. one also where they'll they'll think Lajero is its own type of tobacco plant. Yeah, and Lajero is obviously a priming that exists on every every plant they would call the top every priming plant. a, a Lajero, right? Is that is that right? Todd and Will. Yeah. Well, you got the you got the you can have some of the plants that have that little double corona mm -hmm. up top but it's still Lajero. I got gotcha. you. Yep, gotcha. it's called different things. You know, and and it's not that it's the you know there's there's Viso Seco and Lajero, but there is really more than three primings or levels on a plant. It's Correct. kind of well, the Lajero is that upper part. As yeah, the, key, the, key, the key, anything that gets full exposure to the sun is probably yes. the best way to put it in common terms. And that's why it gets all the nicotine strength. Yes. Yep. Now, I, we've done a segment on Cameroon wrappers before. But I think that one of the things that I never knew until I started researching it is that Cameroon is a country in Africa. And I think people... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't under, they think that Cameroon's like a region in Central no. America or it's some kind of seed or it's some no. kind of priming. But the reason it's called Cameroon is because it's from, from Cameroon, it, it's from Africa. Africa. And, you know, Jose was talking about Cameroon last night. And I think I don't think a lot of people in the room fully understood that. No, it's really a country in Africa. It's like Connecticut Broadleaf was originally from Connecticut. Right. Cameroon is from Cameroon, Africa. African Cameroon, right? Yes, so that which was very tough to get now. Now they can yes. take those Cameroon seeds, and they have grown them in Ecuador. Just Correct. like just, just like, like they, they do with the Connecticut, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing exactly. Yeah. yeah, Sumatra is the same thing. Sumatra comes from Indonesia, but they now it's very common in Ecuador. Absolutely. And yep. And and especially yeah, Sumatra is the same thing. So Sumatra it comes from Sumatra in 
Indonesia, Indonesia. As, you said, as you said, Will. But they take the seeds and they grow it elsewhere. Yep. <laughs> Excuse me. Because African Cameroon <laughs> wrapper, true African Cameroon, is very tough to get, very expensive. Because yes. it's such a worn, torn country. Yes. Um, it's not easy getting things transported around without them being commandeered. And the yep. Christoph Cameroon is an example of true African Cameroon. Yes. Yep. And it's a, and we were talking about this earlier. It's a it's a fragile wrapper too. So on Very top of all the difficulty to procure it, then you have to kind of maintain it. Which so that yeah. tends to be why it's not as widely used. Absolutely. I early on I smoked. A, when I first started smoking, a lot of Cameroon wrappers, and I loved them. But I learned very early, back when I used to golf, that you cannot have that cigar on a golf course. Yeah, no. it'll yeah, blow yeah, up no. on you in yeah, a hole exactly. because you you can't. It's just too delicate. The yeah. wrapper's too delicate. Uh, yeah. This one, next one, is probably the Big, biggest misconception. Without a question, I think without question, right? That darker wrapper cigars are stronger and bolder in strength. Uh, or so I should say stronger in strength and typically bolder in the profile, and lighter wrappers are milder. And while that is the case with some cigars, it's not always the case. Absolutely. In fact, early on it was almost never the case because it was really Broadleaf Connecticut mm -hmm. was really the first sort of Maduros regularly around. Right, right. And so that made it actually, you know, an Ashton Age Maduro mm -hmm. is the lightest it is. of the light. Ashton line. And I think of Opus X as being a natural col colored wrapper yes. that is extremely high in strength, especially Absolutely. when they first come yeah. out. Absolutely. And Ashton's Maduro is is a dark wrapper. It very, is. But very it's, dark. If it's, not a, it's not a powerhouse cigar by any means. No, nope. yep. it, it's probably the lightest one in the line. Yeah, exactly. And it's interesting, in, in Phil's new Indian motorcycle tobacco line, ultra premium line, uh, the Maduro is lighter in strength than the natural. Which is an interesting case of that. So. Yep. Yeah. You usually think you know they always position Maduro as full. Yes. You know? Yep. But yeah. Um. Even if you go to the Padron 1926 series, to me the natural. When you when you add the Maduro wrapper to that, it it cuts the strength just a little bit. Yep. Yeah, and I find the it's funny you say that. Uh, the 26 with that natural wrapper has a much spicier yeah, it's, in your face yep. profile uh, to it than I the smoked Maduro. the 26 Maduro. Yeah, yeah. And and, and I love right, that cigar. Right. It softens it just a little bit. Absolutely. People think it's going to make it even stronger and actually it softens that 20 1926. Yeah, it does. Yep. Um, so I think some people have a misconception that there's no uh, such thing as smoking a cigar too fast. And Jose tells his story about uh, is it Big Mike he calls him will? In his story, did he tell this? Have you heard this story from? Jose I haven't heard Marco? this one. I haven't heard this one. So he says, you know, he's in the cigar shop, and I can't tell as good as Jose, but basically, this guy smoking uh, La Flor Dominicana 700s uh, and big La Flor Dominicana cigars that take two and a half hours to smoke. Right? They got a few in their line yes. that are like that in like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, yes. and just smoking so fast. And Jose said something that stuck with me about that. He said, when you smoke a cigar too fast. It obviously gets hotter, but the effect of that is that the oils evaporate, so you don't get all of the flavor from your cigar. Uh, you know, I, I never heard that like scientific I, description, no, no, that's, about, that's, but that's I mean, a, it, makes it makes sense, right? Well, you know, it heats up and sort of changes the flavor profile, right? And I intentionally left this because apparently I was smoking this too quickly when I lit it up. Yeah, the the telltale sign that you've smoked too quickly is if you start getting that point. Yes. In the ash. Yes. So I left it there, too, for a second. You may not be able to see it from there, but um, there we go. Yeah, you have to, you have to slow down. You have but to if you, slow. But if, if you see your ash all of a sudden or you see a burning ember that has a little sort of cone in the middle of your, uh, mm -hmm. your ash, chances are you're smoking too quickly, and it absolutely, you know, you can catch it up by just taming down a little bit. But right, yep. Like, this is yeah. caught up now, but... Yeah, yeah rotate but I, it. I had never uh, thought about it that way, where the oils are actually evaporating, and those oils in the tobacco is really where you get your flavor from. Yep. Um, so if you're That's smoking a great too, analogy. too quickly, you, you know, that you're not going to... It's going to... He said it's going to taste like paper, is what he said, because you're just kind of ruining all the flavors, and it's going to taste very one-dimensional. So definitely slowing down. Um, not too slow that it has to go out and you have to relight that's what, it. That's because that's the worst. Yeah, and I, I meant that next time Jose comes in the show and I ask him about relighting and why that affects the flavor profile so much. But, um, you know, I think definitely slowing down. So, uh, Will, anything on the last uh, point there about the speed in which you smoke? 
Um, you know, I, I am, I'm a, I'm a slower smoker to begin with. So, I mean, I tend to smoke, but you know, that could also be a problem too. Um, so you definitely don't, because we just talked about if the cigar goes out, the relight, mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to be the same. And even if you have a cigar sitting for like 10, you know, 10 minutes, it, it's not going to be the same. same. Correct. Nope. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I learned a trick early on on relighting a cigar. Mm -hmm. It was from some cigar club, maybe 20 years ago. Mm hmm and it, it still doesn't solve the problem well, but it does help a little bit, is you get rid of the excess ash, yep. you light and char the whole thing again, and then put the, the lighter or the match underneath mm -hmm. and don't inhale. Exhale. Exhale lightly, yes. and you'll see colors, right? which is supposed to be the toxins coming out and mm -hmm. the bad stuff coming out. And when that flame goes back to a plain color, mm -hmm. then you can puff in. And oh, I found it does and help. And you keep the, the light. That's the one thing okay. I was you, you keep, keep the lighter. lighter. Okay. While keep, you're while exhaling. Because I typically ex I try and relight it, and then I exhale, and then I light it again. Now, now but I'll, you're saying keep the lighter keep going. Keep the lighter going. And what I'll typically do is once I can – you get used to doing it once in a while, you can tell when that flame's not going to go away. Then I'll pull away the lighter and just yep. exhale until it burns itself out. I got you. And it's, just, it's never going to be 100%, but it's right, but a heck of a lot better. easier to smoke. I agree. Well, uh, very cool. Uh, so that concludes this episode of Stoey Geek Shorts. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Make sure you check out the live show that we do every Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, stoeygeeks.com forward slash live, as well as cigar-coop.com for all of the latest cigar news and reviews. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Take care, Will. Take care.